Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty great stories about global domination. First up, PayPal acquires crypto security firm Curve for nearly $200 million, which in all reality is just a drop in the bucket. And I'm going to show you why I believe that PayPal is going to become one of the biggest players in the cryptocurrency and digital asset space with this acquisition. On top of that, we're going to take a look at Binance Coin or BNB being offered for uh, live staking over there on Binance. And at first uh, glance, it looks pretty great at 20, almost 28%. Until you look at the details, you realize this isn't really much uh, that is special and it's just a great marketing ploy on top of the fact that other uh, institutions or brokerages in this case, Voyager getting into a uh, massive uh, staking opportunities. But again, uh, you have to peel back the onions to take a look at all the layers. So we'll take a look at what's going on there. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, March 9th, uh, 6 p.m. Houston, Texas time. And uh, we're still in Houston uh, dealing with their, our investment property. And uh, we just had like a nice little, little shot over here of uh, just had to redo the fence because, you know, Houston, everybody loves wooden picket fences for some reason. I don't get it, but whatever. And, uh, you know, just cosmetic stuff. But uh, this is, this is the, the great thing about being in crypto. I mean, you can uh, take profits when you need your profits and put them into other opportunities that are out there, whether that be uh, land, whether that be uh, homes, loans, uh, you know, other opportunities as far as like uh, cryptocurrency, you know, really whatever you want to do. And uh, these are the times to do it because, you know, this is a this is a great bull run. So as time goes on, I mean, we'll see how much uh, this this bull run 2021 does. I think it's going to be massive, uh, but only time will tell. But these are the things that uh, we like to do, me and my wife. So uh, we'll just keep doing those. Anyhow, so let's take a look what's going on in the market today. Let me blow this up so you can see what the heck I'm talking about. So first up, Bitcoin, great job. I mean, it's almost at 55,000. It's probably going to hit that tonight, maybe 56 tomorrow. Who knows? Maybe 60. It's crypto. No, it's anybody's guess. It's a crapshoot. 6% in 24 hours. Ethereum uh, off that news of the um, uh, EIP uh, 1559, where they're going to burn Ethereum and they're going to, you know, sh uh, reduce those uh, minor fees uh, to like a standard one. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, we did a video about this. And, and again, it's a great start, but they have to do more. And just that's the truth. Binance coin up massively. And this is the problem with with our with our market. We hear about these great yields, we're like, great, this is awesome, or this is a great story. But we don't really look at what's going on as far as like the details. And that's why I need to share this with you. Uh, Cardano's up, Tethers, Tethers, nobody cares. Polkadot uh, is up as well. And just so you know, real quick, that Polkadot is up. Uh, first of all, there's a couple of partnerships that were announced. Pokeswap's really, uh, you know, jumping off, all these different things. But on top of that, you've also got uh, a Ledger Live integration where you're going to be able to uh, stake Polkadot on Ledger. So uh, that'll be coming out uh, very soon, actually. So I'm excited about that myself. We've got that on top of, uh, what else is up big time? XRP, resilient, good for you guys. Litecoin up, uh, privacy, number Wimble, all that great stuff, uh, 4%. Uh, Raptera, 22%. Uh, they're doing a lot of, you know. So Terra is... It's all about stable coins, a basket of stable coins, which is really what I think uh, Facebook, which is trying to do, and <laughs> they're just beat them to it. And they are uh, making a lot of partnerships, so they're going to be great. But there was um, IOTA up, some more partnerships that were announced, and uh, uh, it's about the same thing. But there was one more that... Oh, Theta Network was up because of uh, of Sony and those types of things. And then Dogecoin is up because Mark Cuban tweeted out that the Dallas Mavericks are gonna are gonna accept Dogecoin. Who cares? So if you're holding Dogecoin, great. It went up. I don't know. Actually, it went down three percent. So that's Doge. All right. So that's what's going on in the market. Let's uh, let's just jump into the main top story, shall we? Let's do that. So first up, PayPal acquires uh, Curve. Who cares, right? Uh, you're just like it's another you know custody. It is, but it isn't. This is this is a big story. I'm gonna tell you why. So first up, uh, it was sold for, it was PayPal acquired Curve and their team for $200 million. And before people were like, wow, that's a lot of money. That's nothing. I mean, that's for, for what they got and what they're going to do with this. This is like a drop in the bucket. PayPal, I think that's probably their, their, their tip money. And they're just like, you know what? We need you guys to do certain things. And it's not going to be for custody services, which is what I thought it was going to be. It's something totally different. So going into this, 
Curve is a growing number of, of uh, companies, including uh, BitGo, a company that PayPal explored buying last year that helped banks and others protect their crypto holdings from hackers. So if you remember, not too long ago, uh, there was a great story about PayPal was going to be uh, looking into BitGo to actually, you know, purchasing that for their security solution. For some, whatever reason or another, it just kind of fell through. I don't know what it was, but when you take a look at Curve, we're going to take a look at that. Uh, not in great detail because it's pretty tactical stuff, uh, but you're going to see why they went with Curve because it's the future. And it's uh, it's it goes beyond cold storage. It goes beyond um, uh, multi-signatures. It just goes beyond all that and it makes things incredibly uh, safe. And that's what uh, PayPal is looking for. So on top of that, the company is a pioneer, and they're talking about Curve, in using multi-party computation, or MPC, to safeguard holdings. This is the difference. Unlike traditional storage techniques, which typically rely on scattering the key to a digital wallet in various places, uh, MPC, multi-party computation, relies on mathematics and cloud computing to prevent unauthorized access. So instead of just having somebody who's like somewhere, remember all those scams that were going on where you had like one CEO and he was the only one with the private key and then all of a sudden he would just disappear? Well, that just goes away because they're going to allow uh, for multi-party computations, a plethora of people to make these computations or to, to uh, get into their system uh, in an air-gapped way and they'll be able to sign off on different uh, signatures and for transactions so they can move these funds around. But it won't be one person. It won't be a single point of failure. And that's what makes this great. So uh, in an interview with uh, Decrypt, Jose Fernandez de Ponte, VP and general manager of PayPal's blockchain, said PayPal has been in talks with Curve for nearly a year. So, you know, this wasn't just a... <laughs> a haphazard thing, which I wouldn't think that a multi-billion dollar company would do, and they didn't. Yeah, they sought to acquire uh, the 40-person team due to its sophistication. So then it goes on and talks about uh, Curve is not being acquired to run a custody service. This was interesting, uh, which involves charging third parties to safeguard their assets. Instead, PayPal will, will rely on Curve's technology to provide a security layer for PayPal's own digital assets. They're not going to custody for anybody else. It's just their own that they're going to be just holding and accumulating and just letting it sit there. So um, this is what they're trying to do. And they're going to own so much cryptocurrencies and digital assets. I think uh, at some point they will probably rival Grayscale. Imagine a world in which PayPal, imagine a world which PayPal is different custody providers and needs to move assets from one provider to another. While PayPal's crypto service is only available in the U.S., the comment points to how the company is not just planning to expand its retail crypto offerings, but to deploy crypto's underlying technology blockchain on a global scale. And then to finish up, the biggest opportunity for crypto to transform finance lies beyond peer-to-peer -peer consumer transactions. Instead, he points to the potential for merchants, people like me uh, that use PayPal and they can buy stuff on it. You know, the 346 million merchants that they have uh, access to. Payment transaction costs, the sort charged by banks, credit card networks, and others have remained stubbornly high despite the arrival of new efficiencies. Trust me, I know, because I, uh, first of all, PayPal still charges 1.99% plus 30 cents per transaction, the same thing that Stripe does. So I don't know what they're talking about. Hopefully they can drop those prices. Uh, these costs, which are passed on to consumers, are especially stiff for poor consumers so they can move monies across borders. Um, what was the big thing here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so far, PayPal has been tight-lipped by the technology. Uh, they said the system that they need to adapt has to have high throughput in the form of thousands of transactions per second. He noted that the company has looked at blockchains like Ethereum, Stellar, Algorand, and Solana, but emphasized that it's not endorsing any of them for now. So a lot to break down here, but when they talk about, it's just for us, it's just the things that we wanna do. First of all, When you buy cryptocurrency on PayPal, you're not getting cryptocurrency. You're getting paper crypto. You can't transfer it off that platform into a cold storage. It just doesn't work like that. Everything is settled in U.S. dollars, even the things that you, you pay for immersions. Because PayPal knows at some point uh, all fiat throughout the history of the world has failed at some point or another. So, like, you know what? We want something better than that. We want something that... Uh, 
actually will not go away for a long, quite a long time, and it's truly finite. So that's why they picked Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So all these different things, they're just going to accumulate over and over and over again. And what are they going to do? They're going to give you dollars. What has happened to the dollar since 1910? Well, it's just uh, been devaluing uh, as time has gone on. So they will just accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. This is great news <laughs> for PayPal, which really what it comes down to. And if you take a look at it, when I talk about how they're going to dominate, so if they're not going to let everybody have their hands in the cookie jar to get the crypto, well, First of all, how many do they have compared to like the other exchanges? Well, this is a nice little um, uh, article I found over at Shrimpy.io, and they talked about uh, Coinbase and Binance. This was in October of 2020. So I'm sure they've gone up a little bit, sure. Uh, Coinbase, the stats are around 30 million users. Binance, they said similar to Coinbase, we don't have precise numbers. Uh, however, based on an interview given by CZ, he suggests they support about 15 million users. And it probably could be... More than that, I have no idea. I know one article he says, CZ said that there's 100 million users as far as cryptocurrency globally. Not that he has 100 million, but there's 100 million globally. So we take a look at that and let's take a look at how many PayPal has. Well, PayPal has 286 million active users and their merchants are 386 million right there. So when I talk about how PayPal is going to be one of the dominating factors, what do you think has more pull right now? If Binance lists a coin, Coinbase lists a coin or PayPal lists Solana. What do you think would happen to that price right now? Do you think it'll be bigger over, over on Coinbase or Binance? Not anymore. Not anymore. They've got four. And if they list the, the next one or the next three or the next five, it doesn't matter. All those will go to the moon. So this, I think, is a pretty big thing. On top of that, I would just say about this uh, curve, uh, when people are like, well, you know, what is so great about it? First of all, I think the smart people that are in the space are using Curve. They're not using, you know, cold storage on a, on a ledger institution wise. This is not for like me and you retail uh, schlubs. It's just for institutions. And I actually talked about this in one of my videos when I talked about iTrust. iTrust is uh, the uh, Roth IRA that I use that I've been using now for two years. And I'm heavily into uh, over there uh, Bitcoin. A little bit of gold and silver, uh, but Ethereum and Polkadot, because uh, in Q2, you're going to be able to uh, stake in iTrust and it will not be taxed because it's a Roth IRA. And you can check out that video uh, in a little bit. But the whole thing with this is, it just talks about how iTrust got involved with Curve and they're using Curve for their institutional storage and how great it is. And then just real quick um, to simplify this, this is how Curve works. You know, we talked about that. Um, uh, multi-party computation, MPC. So what you can do here is you can customize the wallet spending rules that govern how and when funds can be transferred from your wallets. You can specify any combination which users, groups, and machines can improve different transactions. So these are for large institutions like a PayPal. Uh, execute with speed. You don't need to have cold wallets and physical vaults and all that goes with them. With Curve, you have the security of a cold wallet with the convenience of a cloud service. Pretty interesting. You can use any blockchain. On top of that, and the very last thing is that you can authenticate users through MFAs, easily add and re remove users, change permissions, move them between groups, and grant them access to wallets, lost devices, deprovision, employees, and share man management can be done in a click. On top of that, they have a $50 million insurance policy uh, for all cryptocurrencies. So uh, when you're looking at something that uh, you know, really could change things, this is one of those. And I think this was a, a great move. So I think the biggest losers today probably would be BitGo. I mean, they, they were close to getting bought out, just didn't work out. And uh, I mean, it is what it is. So let me know what you think in the comments section. And let's move on to our next piece. And let me just preface it with this. If you're looking for a uh, Roth IRA, crypto at Roth IRA, if you have a traditional uh, 401k, 403b, military TSB 457, uh, get with these guys. These are the ones that I use. There's a link in the description. You get 30 days for free and uh, just sit down with them. I did a 30 minute call with them first because I was like, I don't know why I would need this. And then when I when they when they <laughs> when we sat down, I understood why. Uh, I also did a, a quick little video. It's about what is this? About 23 minutes and explains the difference between a Roth, a traditional, and a SEP, and how much you can save in taxes. And here's a hint: uh, you pay zero in taxes with the Roth IRA. All right, let's move on to our uh, last piece, actually. So uh, next up, 
uh, Binance is now live. I'm not going to bore you with uh, the other details and the hype because who cares? Uh, this is what it is. The interest rate that you're going to get for that 27%, uh, it's all how much you want to lock up and the minimum and max amounts, okay? So the 30-day lockup is 8%. All right, you know, not too bad. I get 8% for 30 days. Great. But you got a maximum limit of 5,000 BNB per user. Still not too bad, right? 8%, I'll take it. The real question is, are they going to be able to do this again and again and again? The answer, I have no idea. I would think that at some point, maybe these would stay, but the higher tiers would probably go away. 60-day lockup offers 12%, and it has a maximum limit of 500 BNB per user. So you're like, eh, all right, 500, I guess. And then, uh, but that's a lot of BNB, let's be honest, because like BNB right now is like 200 bucks, so it's a lot of money. Uh, but to get that the pretty good one, 90-day lockup offers 16.5% APY, APY, maximum limit of 100 and interestingly, the highest API of 27.5% is given out to the shortest duration of 15 days. However, users are limited to, to deposit only five tokens in this offering. And it's a first come, first serve. At the time of press, the 30-day offering was the only rate available. So I got to tell you, bravo, Binance. That's that's pretty good. And I know some, some people will say, well, that's, you know, it's, it still is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it's great. I mean, if you're looking at it, you're like, this is a pretty good deal. I should do this. And you should. I mean, if you're okay with moving, you know, your crypto around. Or, and you, if you bought Binance coin, it's probably there anyhow. So you probably just had to click a button and off it goes, right? But I know they were they were doing the same thing with like other cryptos. They were offering like people just to ship it over there and they were giving them these great rates. And everybody thought it was like forever. And it was like 30 days. And they're like, what the hell happened? So just be aware that the things that get into these um, APYs and yield and stuff like that, just look at the fine details so you know, like, hey, where's where's my 27% or where's my 5,000%? Th what the hell happened? Oh, it was only for 30 days. I got you. So on top of that, there's also uh, friends of the show, Voyager. Yeah, Rob's a shill. What are you going to do? Oh, one more thing. Things that I talk about on this channel, uh, I'm pretty biased because I own... Everything I talk about, I pretty much own. Like, unless, except Solana. I don't own Solana. Uh, although I should. Sounds pretty good. Um, I just added uh, Swissborg, actually, to my to my account. Uh, we did a an interview with these guys. I just, I just, I was picked off because I couldn't get it. And I put a little tweet. I'm like, I'd love to get it. And then, of course, people smarter than me, which isn't hard, they said, hey, just go over to KuCoin and you can get it. And I, that's exactly what I did. Uh, American users, even people in Texas, they can open up an account and they can uh, buy up SwissBorg and the fees are pretty uh, reasonable. I have no affiliate link. Just go to KuCoin. That's all I got. Anyhow, Voyager, uh, not to be outdone. They're like, hey, look, we got some some great APY. And they, they talk about, welcome to March interest mania. Interest rates for this month have been raised. So you get 9% on USDC. That's pretty good. 6.25 on Bitcoin. 5.2 on ETH, 8% on DOT, that's pretty good. 5.25 on ADA, that's really good. 5.5 on LINK, really good. 6.5 on Litecoin. So again, do not think that these are all set in stone and you will get these at all times. So if you don't have your crypto on Voyager, uh, you can put it over there and this is what you get, just leaving it on there. Um, and that's pretty much how it is. Now there is some disadvantages because they are an exchange, not your keys, not your crypto. And you know, if there's a hack, these guys have some, you know, uh, insurance uh, that goes a little bit of, of a ways. But uh, if you're looking, if you're just looking to buy it and you're just too lazy to send it over to your <laughs> to your ledger or wherever, like me, it's the truth, I I am dollar cross averaging every day. Sometimes I don't get to send it over the ledger. Um, that's just how it goes. So just uh, keep it on there, and uh, you will gain some interest. Now, uh, everything else, of course, if you want to keep it in like your own wallet with your own mnemonic phrases and do it like that. Like I'm excited about Polkadot being on the ledger and I can stake it. I'm probably going to do that. Anyhow, so that's what's going on uh, today in the world. And um, it's supposed to be, not supposed to be, it will be a great year. And, uh, you know, we saw these big dips, these peaks and valleys. And I know people were flipping out and I told you, you know, I'm like, that's just how it is. Uh, it's going to go up, it's going to go down, but just uh, look at the four-year cycles like we always talk about, and look at the, all the news, all the positive news that is going on. Can you imagine this happening in 2017, where we have a PayPal 
um, buying a an institutional grade custody service just so they can move some money around and store all their crypto. Would you ever imagine that Elon Musk would be tweeting about Dogecoin and the SEC would might be investigating him because of Doge? Or the fact that they bought it at billions or 1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin, MicroStrategy, Mass Mutual, uh, everybody, everybody else that you could probably you know put in there, Paul Tudor Jones and uh, all those guys. I mean, it's going to be a great year. So uh, all you got to do, uh, this is this is what I always tell myself. I, I look in the mirror, I go, Rob, just don't do something stupid and sell everything. <laughs> that's really all I got. All right, so look, that's it for today. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel tremendously. I'd appreciate that. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And uh, that is it. So I'll link those uh, that video about the uh, Roth IRA at the end. And uh, I'll let YouTube do its magic for the other one. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.